House will please be in order. Those not having the privilege of the floor will please vacate the chamber at this time. All members and guests in the gallery will please rise as we are led in prayer today by Pastor Rick Glass. Pastor Glass is the guest of the gentleman from Delegate Worrell. Let's pray. Great God in heaven, we ask that you come down and bless all the members of this chamber this morning. Give them the wisdom that they need from above. Open their understanding as they deliberate on the people's business. Help them as they deal with the important, the serious, and sometimes life or death issues that we face today. Give them the protection that they need from all harm. We uh, ask that you help them to do what's right in thine eyes and what's best for the people that they represent. Give them the boldness that they need and the courage of their convictions. God bless this chamber. God bless their efforts. And God bless the great state of West Virginia. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Members and guests in the gallery will please remain standing as we are led in the pledge by the gentleman from the 18th, Delegate Rail. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members and guests, please stand or please uh, join me in reciting the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Members and guests may be seated. Reading of the journal. Journal of the House of Delegates, Charleston, Thursday, January 17th, 2019. Gentleman from 26, Delegate Evans. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that further reading of the journal be dispensed with and it be approved as having been read. Gentleman from 26, I ask unanimous consent that further reading of the journal be dispensed with and that it be approved as having been read. Is there objection? Chair hears no objection, so ordered introduction to guests. Gentleman from 23rd, Delegate Miller. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we're honored to have with us today in the rear gallery the Honorable William S. Thompson. He is the circuit judge of the 21st Cir 25th Circuit, I'm sorry, uh, covering Boone and Lincoln County. So on behalf of the gentleman from the 22nd, myself and the 24th, would uh, Judge Thompson please rise and the House make him feel welcome. Gentleman from the 24th, Delegate Tomlin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'd like to welcome our pages uh, on behalf of myself and the other delegate from the 24th District, uh, ja Jackson Diamond, Caleb Johnson, Shana Cooper, Dysan Williamson, Mackenzie Booth, Lacey Brewer, Layla Shepard, and Michaela McDowell from uh, Omar Elementary School. I'd like to give them a warm welcome. Thank you. Gentleman from the 4th, Delegate Canestrero. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If you look up in the South Gallery today, you're not seeing double. Well, maybe you are seeing double, but it's not me. Here with us today in the South Gallery is my twin brother, Dr. Victor Canestrero, if you'll stand up. He's in town for some dental society meetings. Gentleman from the ninth, Doug Holland. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In the West Gallery, I have two fellow work countyans with us today, Ken Heine and his wife Kathy. I also want to congratulate Kathy on her recent retirement for, as a professional educator at the Work County High School. If the House could make him feel welcome. Gentleman from the 34th, Doug Boggs. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm very happy to introduce on, on your behalf as well as mine a very dear friend in the rear gallery, if he would stand, uh, Dr. William Simmons, uh, former president of Glenville State College and former chancellor of the West Virginia Board of Regents. Please make Dr. Simmons welcome. Gentlemen from the 25th, Doug Painter. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to introduce a very good friend of mine in the gallery. Um, name's Kathy Krause, and she's accompanied by her daughter Willow and son Chase. Further introductions of guests. If not, the chair is pleased to introduce some pages today. We're pleased to have with us from Little Canal Valley Christian School, Hope Carter, Olivia Fitzwater, Nicholas Eli Randolph, Bailey Carper, Raven Story, Briley Rowe, <coughs> Lindsay Posey, and their principal, Amy Fitzwater. If our guests would please stand today. <clears throat> Further introductions of guests. 
Report to standing committees. Committee on Education is headed under consideration House Bill 2095, assessing the college and career readiness of 11th and 12th grade students. Reports back committee substitute, therefore, with the recommendation that the committee substitute do pass. Report to be received. Committee on Energy has had under consideration House Bill 2489 relating to the removal of the severance tax on oil and gas produced from low producing oil and natural gas wells. Reports the same back with recommendation that it do pass that it be referred to Committee on Finance. Report to be received. Bill be referred to Committee on Finance. Committee on Senior, Children, and Family Issues has had under consideration House Bill 2010 relating to foster care. Reports the same back with recommendation that it do pass, that it be referred to the Committee on Health and Human Resources and then to the Committee on Judiciary. Report to be received under Rule 80. Bill be referred to the Committee on Health and Human Resources, then the Judiciary. Committee on Judiciary has had into consideration House Bill 2423, prohibiting certain sex offenders from being in a supervisory position over children. Reports the same, reports back committee substitute, therefore, with the recommendation that the committee substitute do pass. Report to be received. Committee on Prevention and Treatment of Substance abuse is originating House Bill 2530 creating a voluntary certification for recovery residences reports the same back with the recommendation that it do pass that it be referred to Committee on Health and Human Resources. Report to be received under Rule 80. Bill be referred to the Committee on Health and Human Resources. Originating in the Committee on Prevention and Treatment of Substance Abuse is House Bill 2531 permitting trained nurses to provide mental health services in a medication assisted treatment program Program, reports the same back with recommendation that it do pass, that it be referred to the Committee on Health and Human Resources. Report to be received under Rule 80. Bill be referred to the Committee on Health and Human Resources. Committee on Health and Human Resources has had under consideration House Bill 2405 imposing a health care related provider tax on certain health care organizations. Reports the same back with recommendation that it do pass, that it be referred to Committee on Finance. Report to be received. Bill be referred to the Committee on Finance. Committee on Health and Human Resources has had under consideration House Bill 2347 providing long term care and substance abuse treatment reports the same back with amendment with recommendation that it do pass as amended that it be referred to committee on finance report to be received bill be referred to committee on finance committee on health and human resources has had under consideration house bill 2324 authorizing the acupuncture board to issue certificates to perform auricular acudex therapy reports the same back with amendment with recommendation that it do pass as amended that it be referred to committee on government organization report to be received bill be referred to the Committee on Government Organization. Reports to select committees. Messages from the Executive, messages from the Senate. Resolutions. House Concurrent Resolution 14, United States Army Captain Benjamin Rock Memorial Bridge. Resolution be referred to the Committee on Technology and Infrastructure, then rules. Further resolutions. Petitions. Delegates Powell, Fleischauer, Williams, Walker, and Hanson present a petition signed by citizens of the state urging Congress and the legislature to increase certain senior citizen benefits. Petition be received, be referred to the Committee on Seniors, Children, and Family Issues. Delegate Schott presents a petition signed by citizens of the state recommending that pawn shops require documentation verifying identity, address, and ownership in the case of firearms, a legible serial number before accepting items being pawned. Petition be received and be referred to the Committee on the Judiciary. Further petitions? Motions? Bills introduced. House Bill 2011, Road Maintenance Program. Lady from the 49th. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that the further reading of the bills introduced be dispensed with and they be considered as formally introduced and referred to the appropriate committees as indicated on the chamber automation system. The lady from the 49th asked unanimous consent that further reading of bills introduced be dispensed with and that each bill be considered formally introduced and referred to the appropriate committees as shown on the chamber automation system. Is there objection? Is there objection? Chair hears no objection, so ordered unfinished business. Bills on third reading. House Bill 2185, relating to the removal of animals left unattended in motor vehicles. Gentleman from the 35th, Doug Capito, to explain the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the opportunity to start the day on a uh, compassionate foot here. The chairman yesterday explained a strike and insert to this bill, which actually explained the extent of the bill, and we adopted that strike and insert, so I'll run over the high points quickly and be available for questions if you desire. Currently in code, we have, it, is a, it is a crime to leave an animal in a vehicle unattended if it's likely that there will be physical injury or death to the animal. 
What we don't have in code is the ability for anyone to intervene. What we are doing with this bill is providing that certain uh, enumerated uh, individuals have the ability lawfully to enter into a vehicle where an unattended animal is in danger. Uh, members of the public are not authorized to perform uh, any freeing activities um, and no search of the no further search of the vehicle can be provided uh, except for expressly provided by other law um, the that's the extent of the bill I'll, I'll wait for questions I urge passage who wish to speak to the passage of the bill not to question before the House is, shall the bill pass? Those in favor will vote aye, those opposed will vote no. The clerk will prepare the machine. Has every member voted? Has every member voted? If so, the clerk will close the machine and ascertain the result. On that question, 96 ayes, zero nays, four members absent not voting, more than a majority of those delegates present having voted in the affirmative. Chair declares the bill passed. Are there amendments to the title? Committee on Judiciary moves to amend the title. Question before the House is the adoption of the title amendment. Those in favor will say aye. Those opposed will say no. Ayes have it. The title amendment is adopted. Title of the bill as amended by the House will be and remain the title of the bill. Clerk will please communicate the action of the House to the Senate and request concurrence therein. Next bill on third reading. Committee substitute for House Bill 2307 relating to creating a provisional license for practicing barbering and cosmetology. Gentleman from the 56th, Delegate Howe to explain the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The purpose of this bill is to remove the requirements to take an examination for license to practice barbering and cosmetology in the state of West Virginia by an applicant with a valid license from another state. The bill, saw, bill also provides that the board may issue a provisional license to an applicant with an expired license from another state and authorizes the board to set applicable fees for a provisional license, and that fee shall not exceed one half the cost of a full license. I urge passage. Question before the House is, shall the bill pass? Are there members who wish to speak to the passage? of the bill. Lady from the 51st, Delegate Fleshauer. Questions of the chair? Chairman Yields. Um, I'm just uh, curious about the policy reasons behind this and whether we do this in other professions. The, the policy behind it, uh, we've had some complaints that people had uh, moved into the state, their license had recently expired in the other state. Uh, and they said, well, you have to show where you went to school and that. We've had uh, at least one instance that has been reported to where the school had closed. They couldn't get uh, their transcripts since the school had closed years before and were told they would have to go back to school. Okay, so this is, okay. Um, and do we do this for other professions? Most, I'm told that most have reciprocity language similar to this. Okay, thank you. Are there other members who wish to speak to the passage of the bill? If not, does the gentleman wish to close debate? If not, the question before the House is, shall the bill pass? Those in favor will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no. The clerk will prepare the machine. Has every member voted? Has every member voted? If so, the clerk will close the machine and ascertain the result on that question. 96 ayes, zero nays, four members absent not voting. More than a majority of those delegates present having voted in the affirmative, the chair declares the bill passed. Clerk will please report the title. Committee substitute for House Bill 2307. Are there amendments to the title? If not, the title is read by the clerk, will be and remain the passage of the bill. Clerk will please report the action of the House to the Senate and request concurrence therein. Further bills on third reading. Bills on second reading. Committee substitute for House Bill 2190, modifying bill requirements. Are there amendments? Delegate Steele moves to amend the bill. This is HFA Steel 1 17, number 1. Does the gentleman from the 29th wish to explain the amendment? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Um, we had a similar amendment in committee. This one's slightly different. If you'll notice in the bill, it provides that a magistrate could find good calls to not issue a personal recognizance bond and require cash surety or property. Um, when you go to an arraignment, and, and the general thought behind this is when, when an individual is arraigned, a lot of times it's done as a video arraignment 
from the regional jail to where the magistrate's just sitting there and has the defendant in front of him. He explains the charge to him and he assigns bail at that point. So there's really no one there from the state of West Virginia to make an argument for good cause why bail should not be uh, surety or cash or some other form of security aside from personal recognizance. So the amendment, what it does, it provides for a prosecutor that within 10 days of setting bond or bail by the court or magistrate, a prosecuting attorney may bring a motion to set cash or surety bond. The presiding court shall hold a summary hearing upon the motion within five days and make a finding based upon the evidence presented by the prosecuting attorney if good cause to sh is shown to require cash or surety bond. And upon good cause shown, the presiding court shall set reasonable cash or surety bond in accordance with the provisions of this article. It does not require a prosecutor to make a motion. It doesn't uh, require that just because the motion was made that um, a, a cash or surety bond be, be issued, what it does is it gives the state a mechanism to show up and show good calls because a lot of times these bonds are set in the middle of the night or early in the morning and 99 times out of 100, no, no member from the state is present to oppose that. So this just provides a mechanism by which the state could go back and potentially correct something that goes through the cracks. Now the discussion we had before is, you know, this is simply going to apply to very minor crimes to begin with. Is this necessary? Well, um, there's always the potential that someone that's dangerous or a known danger to the public could slip through the cracks on a trespassing charge or slip through the cracks on some other very minor charge to where, to where this amendment to the bill would provide that mechanism for the state to be able to present their good cause. And of course, the defendant would have the ability to combat that and a judge is gonna make a decision if good cause is shown. So um, I would ask you for your consideration and support of the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The question before the House is the adoption of the amendment. Just as explained by the gentleman from the 29th, are there members who wish to speak to the amendment? Lady from the 51st, Elga Fleshauer. Thank you. Will the gentleman yield for a question or questions? Yes, I will. Thank you. Um, how is this different from the amendment that was um, offered and defeated in committee? The one that was offered in committee provided for within 15 days. This one provides for within 10 days. Okay. And... Um, you, pro, correct me if I'm wrong, but prosecutors still can file a motion on their own without the need for this amendment. Is that correct? That is incorrect and correct at the same time. It depends. Right now, if you're on bond, a prosecutor can bring a motion to revoke your bond for conduct that happened after the setting of bond. What our, what our amendment contemplates is that information was available to the prosecutor, but because the prosecutor didn't have the ability to present that information to the magistrate, the magistrate didn't have an opportunity to hear good calls. So this would contemplate information that was available prior to the setting of bond. What you're bringing up would be information that would be subsequent or a subsequent act that would cause the revoking of bond. I guess what I'm asking is, Normally, prosecutors always can file a motion um, to present, you can attempt to file a motion to present evidence that would be relevant to this decision. And I don't think there's anything that would prevent a prosecutor from doing that, is there? Yes, there would be. This would be stare decisis. You know, a court sets bond based upon the information set in front of them. So if no Except information was presented to them, if I can answer the question, if no information was presented, then there's not going to be an opportunity for a prosecutor to go back and combat or overturn that prior decision based on the decision going to stand. It's already been litigated. The only way a prosecutor at present without this amendment could go back and modify bond or change bond would be as if a new act were committed. I guess if the, if the prosecutor had not been present at the hearing, they wouldn't have had the opportunity to present evidence. And so what I'm suggesting is you could still file a motion, but I understand your position. Thank you. Thank you. Gentleman from the 60th, Delegate Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, would the gentleman yield? Gentleman does yield. Yes, I will. Yield. Okay, you're a prosecutor, right? 
Uh, say that again. You are a prosecutor. Is I was. Right? Yes. Okay. So you have experience in this area. I'm trying to. I'm trying to wrap my head around this. So for a, a point of clarification, can you help me understand? Someone is brought in on a charge of drunk and disorderly at two o'clock in the morning. Uh, magistrate sets bail. They're released, and then uh, the prosecutor comes in the next morning, looks through his cases that are on his desk, and he sees one says. Uh, John Smith was picked up last night for drunk and disorderly. He was released on bail, and uh, that prosecutor happens to recognize that name, looks through his files, and says he's a, a wanted serial killer. And then he can file a, a motion to, to uh, bring the man in, put him on bail. Is that correct? Yes. Is that the general idea? That's the general idea. Is it, something slipping through the cracks that the magistrate didn't is there, notice? Is there currently anything in law that allows that prosecutor to sort of recapture Mr. Smith? Well, in your case of a wanted serial killer, I'm willing to bet he's got a capious warrant issued right. against him, so he could be picked up on that anyway. Um, you know, what I'm more contemplating is, say Mr. Smith has a violent history that he's not wanted for anything, and he gets picked up on that, on that violent charge, or I'm sorry, on that nonviolent you know, charge that would fit under this code, but he's got seven other convictions on a very violent charge, maybe the prosecutor has a good cause to bring that motion and have that surety set to ensure. Maybe that person has a history of not appearing for court. You know, maybe that person has had seven or eight capious warrants issued in the past, and the prosecutor says, ah, we actually need surety because this person has failed to appear for court five times in the last three years. So, so that's what I'm more contemplating. That's, that's much more clear. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Gentleman from the 27th, delegate shot. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As a sponsor of this bill, I see no harm in the amendment. I, I don't think it uh, detracts from the purpose of the bill. The gentleman from the uh, 29th has his more recent prosecut prosecutorial experience than mine. I suspect he was still in diapers when I was completing my term as an assistant prosecutor. So I'll defer to his uh, his explanation of the need for it. I, we're, we're dealing with a bill that's just going to mainly involve nonviolent misdemeanors and other cases, so I don't think it's going to be utilized frequently, but uh, in those cases where the gentleman believes it, it would uh, correct an error, then I see no harm in it. I will vote for the amendment and urge you to do likewise. Does the gentleman from the 60th, Delegate Wilson, seek to be recognized again? No, sir. If not, are there other members who wish to speak to the amendment? If not, does the gentleman from the 29th wish to close debate on the amendment? If not, the question before the House is the adoption of the amendment. Those in favor will say aye. aye. Those opposed will say no. The ayes have it. The chair declares the amendment adopted. Are there further amendments? If not, the bill will be advanced to third reading. House Bill 2311, exempting short-term license holders to submit information to the State Tax Commission once the term of the permit has expired. Are there amendments? Delegate Howe moves to amend the bill. This is HFA Howe 1-18. Gentleman from the 56th, Delegate Howe, ask unanimous consent to explain the amendment in lieu of having it read. Is there objection? Chair sees no objection. Gentleman from the 56th, Delegate Howe. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is a technical correction. It strikes the word State Tax Commission and inserts in lieu thereof Tax Commissioner. I urge adoption of the amendment. Question before the House is the adoption of the amendment. Are there members who wish to speak to the amendment? If not, the question is the adoption of the amendment. All those in favor will say aye. aye. Those opposed will say no. The ayes have it and the amendment is adopted. Are there further amendments? If not, the bill will be advanced. For the bills on second reading, bills on first reading. Committee substitute for House Bill 2008 relating to nonpartisan election of justices of the Supreme Court of Appeals. Bill will be advanced. Committee substitute for House Bill 2193 providing the specific as cheat of a U.S. savings bonds. Bill will be advanced. Committee substitute for House Bill 2362 relating to procedures for voting and emergency absentee ballot by qualified voters. Bill will be advanced. Further bills on first reading. Leaves of absence. Lady from the 49th. For our colleagues, Coles, Ellington, Hill, and Rodigario. Without objection, leaves will be granted. Remarks by members of the House. Remarks by members of the House. Introduction of guests. Miscellaneous business. Lady from the 49th. Mr. Speaker, I move subject to announcement that the House adjourn until 11 a.m. Monday, January 21st. Question before the House is the motion by the lady from the 49th that subject to announcements the House stand adjourned until 11 a.m. on Monday, January 21st. Are there announcements? Gentleman from the 10th, Delegate Chris. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your Committee on Finance will not meet Monday morning, but we will continue our budget hearings Monday afternoon at 2 p.m. with the Department of Agriculture and at 3 p.m. with the Department of Conservation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Gentleman from the 35th, Delgado Capito. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Committee on the Judiciary will resume the posted agenda today in the committee room at 1. And on Monday, the committee will meet at 10 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock in the morning in the committee room, and the agenda will be posted. Gentleman from the 21st, Delegate Dean. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your Committee on Education will meet Monday at 2 p.m. in the House Education Room. The agenda will be posted. Gentleman from the 16th, Delegate Limble. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your Committee on Technology and Infrastructure will meet Monday at 1 p.m. in the House Government Organization Room. The, the agenda is posted. Gentleman from the 53rd, Delegate Jennings. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Committee on Fire and EMS will meet Monday uh, at 4 p.m. at Gov uh, Org Room. Thank you. Gentleman from the 11th, Delegate Atkinson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm inquiring about the availability of the Chamber on Tuesday. January 22nd from 9 to 10 a.m. for a public hearing. Chamber is available. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I would like to announce a public hearing for the Committee on Health and Human Resources on Tuesday, January 22nd from 9 to 10 o'clock on House Bill 2010 relating to foster care. Are there further announcements? If not, the question before the House is the motion by the lady from the 49th that the House stand adjourned until 11 a.m. on Monday, January 21st. Those in favor will say aye. Those opposed will say no. Ayes have it. The motion is adopted. The House is adjourned until 11 a.m. on Monday, January 21st. The Senate will please come to order. The Senate will please come to order. All those not having privileges of the floor would please vacate the chamber. And with those on the floor and our guest in the gallery, please rise as we are led in prayer this morning by the Reverend Dick Corbin. He's the Director of Church Relations at Union Mission of West Virginia in Charleston. And then please remain standing as we are led in the pledge this morning by the Senator from Nicholas, Reverend Corbin. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning at the beginning days of this new session. And we request, Lord, your intervening guidance in this session. Lord, not only are you interested in the big picture of things, you care about the details just as much. The writer of Proverbs put it this way, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. And Lord, there'll be many who will petition this body of senators for many things that they desire and their interests and requests for them to accommodate. And our prayer is, Lord, that you would give these senators and all those that work with them the wisdom of Solomon to discern exactly what is right and good for West Virginia. And then, Lord, while these public servants are here, we pray for their respective family members in their home district, that you would watch over them, protect them, while their family member is here serving all of us. We ask these things in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. The Senator from Nicholas. Thank you, Mr. President. With those on the floor and those in the gallery, please join me as we pledge our allegiance to the flag of the greatest nation on earth. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. Thank you. You may be seated. The reading of the journal. West Virginia Legislature Senate Journal, Thursday, January 17th, 2019. The Senator from Boone requests unanimous consent that further reading of the journal be dispensed with and that it be approved as having been read. Is there objection? Chair hears none. So ordered. Introduction of guest. On behalf of the Senate, it is my pleasure to welcome our honorary pages for the day. Please stand and be recognized as your name is called. As guest is the Senator from Harrison, we have David Brannon. And as guest of the Senator from Jefferson, we have Jamie Welch, Lucinda Rodriguez, Sophia Show, Teresa Rucker, Noel Sugenis, and Madison Tester. If they would all please stand and the Senate give them a warm welcome.
Thank you. You may be seated. Further introductions, the junior senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. It's a um, uh, pleasure on behalf of the Senate to introduce Matthew Davis again in the back of the chamber. He's our doc of the day. If the Senate would give him a warm welcome. The Senator from Marion County. Thank you, Mr. President. It's my esteemed pleasure today to introduce this body to our newest member. Uh, if Senator Paul Hardesty would stand and we would all give him a warm welcome. Congratulations, Senator. Further introductions, the Senator from Boone County. Thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of the Senator from Logan, it's a great honor to introduce uh, members of his family, his lovely wife, Debbie, his mother, Donna, uh, daughter, Brooke Honaker, uh, his uh, son-in-law, Josh Honaker, Tim and Tammy Hardesty and Josh, uh, Ralph and Kathy Blevins, Mark and Connie Adkins, Ray and Lynn Kolchuk, Jared and Andy Dean, with Ava and Alexander, Wes and Jamie Adkins, Jeremy and April Kolchuk and Sawyer, Kendall and Caden Thompson. If they would all stand in the Senate, make them welcome. <laughs> Further introductions. Further introductions. The Senator from Jefferson County. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I have uh, one parent for one of my pages here for Madeline Tester. Her father, uh, Kevin Tester, is here. And also accompanying all of the scouts that you see is the company chief, Laura Bacon. It, would, she, would they both stand and the Senate and make them feel welcome? I you have, thank you. I have some further introductions. So we have Jefferson County Day here today, and there are several groups from Jefferson County here. It's a long list, so I'll just quickly say their names, and if they would please stand up. Leslie McLaren, Cassandra Mellon, Debbie McClure, Nathan Harmon, Paul Beatty, David Hardy, Jennifer Mayen, Bridget Tester, Kurt Compton, Maria Kati Gani, sorry if I got that wrong, Naomi Long, Kathleen Lasserchak, and Catherine Joswick. Will the Senate please make them all welcome? Further introductions. The senator from the senior senator from the 16th. Thank you, Mr. President. We have with us uh, the former Senator of Jefferson, Senator Herb Snyder. Please stand and let's please give him a warm Senate welcome. <laughs> Further introductions. Further introductions. The Senator from Harrison County. Thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of my senior senator from Braxton, I'd like everybody to welcome Izetta Brannon today. She's the mother of our page coming all the way from Gilmer County. And Izetta, if you'll stand and uh, please make her feel welcome. There she is. Further introductions? Communications from the House. The Clerk of the House announced the passage by that body of committee substitute for House Bill 2028, limiting supervision of laying of lines on state right of, rights of way. Message will be received and referred to Committee on Government Organization. Committee substitute for House Bill 2038 relating to the procedure to determine if an occupation or profession should be regulated. Message will be received and referred to the Committee on Government Organization and then to the Committee on Judiciary. Committee substitute for House Bill 2128 allowing state employees to take paid leave to attend parent-teacher conference for their children. Message will be received and referred to the Committee on Government Organization and then to the Committee on Finance. Committee substitute for House Bill 2183 clarifying where a charge of DUI may be brought against an individual. Message will be received and referred to the Committee on the Judiciary. Are there further House messages? 
No, sir. Communications from the executive. I have a letter dated January 17th, 2019, addressed to the Honorable Mac Warner, Secretary of State. Dear Secretary Warner, pursuant to West Virginia Code 3105, I have this day appointed the Honorable Paul Hardesty of Logan County, West Virginia, as a senator representing the 7th Senatorial District to fill the vacancy created by the resignation of the Honorable Richard N. Ojeda II from this day through the remainder of the unexpired term of said office. Sincerely, Jim Justice, Governor. Communication will be received. Further communications from the executive? No, sir. Reports from standing committees? Your Committee on Finance has had under consideration committee substitute for Senate Bill 1, increasing access to career education and workforce training, and reports back a committee substitute for same, with the recommendation that the committee substitute for committee substitute do pass, respectfully submitted, Craig Blair, Chair. Report will be received. Your Committee on the Judiciary has had under consideration Senate Bill 18 relating to crimes committed on state capitol complex and reports back a committee substitute for same with the recommendation that the committee substitute do pass respectfully submitted Charles S. Trump IV, Chair. Report will be received. Your Committee on Health and Human Resources has had under consideration Senate Bill 63 relating to partial filling of prescriptions and has amended same and reports the same back with the recommendation that it do pass as amended but under the original double committee reference first be referred to the Committee on the Judiciary respectfully submitted Michael J. Maroney, Chair. Report will be received. Your Committee on Health and Human Resources has had under consideration Senate Bill 136 relating to tobacco usage and e-cigarette restrictions and reports the same back with the recommendation that it do pass but under the original double committee reference first be referred to the Committee on the Judiciary respectfully submitted Michael J. Maroney, Chair. Report will be received. Under the bill's original double committee reference will be referred to the Committee on the Judiciary. Your Committee on Health and Human Resources has had under consideration Senate Bill 169, DHHR rule relating to assisted living residences, and has amended same, and reports the same back with the recommendation that it do pass as amended, but under the original double committee reference, first be referred to the Committee on the Judiciary, respectfully submitted, Michael J. Maroney, Chair. Report will be received and referred to the Committee on the Judiciary. Your Committee on Government Organization has had under consideration Senate Bill 255 relating to Emergency Medical Services Advisory Committee and reports back a committee substitute for same with the recommendation the committee substitute do pass. Respectfully submitted, Gregory L. Boso, Chair. Report will be received. Your Committee on Government Organization has had under consideration Senate Bill 271 concerning government procurement of commodities and services and reports the same back with the recommendation that it do pass but under the original double committee reference first be referred to the Committee on the Judiciary. Respectfully submitted, Gregory L. Boso, Chair. Report will be received and referred to the Committee on the Judiciary. Your Committee on Government Organization has had under consideration Senate Bill 292 relating to fire service equipment and training funds for volunteer VFDs and reports the same back with the recommendation that it do pass but under the original double committee reference first be referred to the Committee on Finance respectfully submitted Gregory L. Boso, Chair. Report will be received under the bill's original double committee reference will be referred to the Committee on Finance. Your Committee on Health and Human Resources has had under consideration Senate Bill 310, establishing certain requirements for dental insurance, and reports back a committee substitute for same, with the recommendation that the committee substitute do pass, but under the original double committee reference, first be referred to the Committee on Finance, respectfully submitted, Michael J. Maroney, Chair. Report will be received and referred to the Committee on Finance. That's all I have, sir. Reports from select committees. There are none. Introduction of bills. The junior senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask unanimous consent that Senate Bills 343 through 353 be considered introduced, read by their titles, and referred to the appropriate committees as shown on the chamber automation system. Is there objection? Chair, here's none. So ordered. Resolutions. Senate concurrent resolution 11 by Senator... Clements, Roberts, Rucker, Palumbo, Jeffries, Wolfel, Plymel, Swope, Boso, Unger, Seipoltz, Stallings, 
Romano, Beach, Blair, Baldwin, Smith, Klein, Prezioso, Lindsay, and Hamilton urging Congress pass fully funded long-term surface transportation and infrastructure measures. The Senator from Wetzel County. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask unanimous consent that the resolution be taken up for immediate consideration, the committee reference dispensed with, and the resolution put upon its adoption. Senator from Wessel County requests unanimous consent that the resolution be taken up for immediate consideration, committee reference be dispensed with, and the resolution be placed upon its adoption. Is there objection? Chair ears none. The clerk will please read the resolution. Senate Concurrent Resolution 11, urging Congress to pass fully funded long-term surface transportation and infrastructure funding measures that address our nation's critical infrastructure needs. Question before the Senate is adoption of resolution. Is there discussion? The Senator from Wetzel County. Thank you, Mr. President. Consent and concurrent resolution 11 is to encourage the federal government to address the crumbling infrastructure within the United States. It was on August 1st, 2007 that the bridge on Interstate 35 in Minneapolis collapsed, killing 13 people and injuring 145. At the time this happened, I thought that the alarm clocks in Washington would go off and the government would do something about our dangerous highways Unfortunately, they rolled over, hit the snooze button, and went back to sleep. During the past presidential election, both candidates expressed infrastructure as a major platform for the committee, for them, but nothing has been done either by the Congress or our administration. The I-35 bridge opened in 1967. How many bridges of this era do we have in West Virginia? The 2017 infrastructure report card put out by the American Society of Civil Engineers reports that we have 1,247 bridges, that's 17% of our bridges in this state, that are structurally deficient. We spent over $154 million on bridge capital improvement projects in 2017, and I'm sure that we have spent more since then. The report card also says that we have that 19% of the 38,770 miles of public roads are in poor condition. I'm sure that this number is well above that 19% today, even with the projects that were completed with the Roads to Prosperity funding. I am dedicated to finding a solution to the problems of our crumbling infrastructure and highways as good roads are necessary for the requirement for economic development and growth in West Virginia. The basic bottom line is that we need help to fund these infrastructure projects. We're not talking about millions or hundreds of millions. We're talking about billions of dollars. Hopefully this resolution is the first step in getting the help we need from Washington. Mr. President, I urge adoption of the resolution and I'm requesting the yeas and nays on this issue. Further discussion? Further discussion? Not the question for the Senate is shall the resolution pass? All those in favor, the yeas and nays have been demanded. Is the demand sustained? The demand is sustained. All those in favor of the resolution will vote yay. Those opposed will vote nay. The clerk will prepare the machine. Has every member voted? Has every member voted? If so, the clerk will close the machine and ascertain the results. On this question, there being 33 yeas, zero nays, one absent and not voting, more than a majority of those present in voting having voted in the affirmative, I declare the resolution adopted. The clerk will communicate the action of the Senate to the House. Further resolutions? No, sir. Motions? Petitions? There are none. Junior Senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask unanimous consent that we return to the fourth order of business. Is there objection? Chair hears none. Clerk has a report from a standing committee. Your Committee on Finance has had under consideration Senate Bill 354 originating in committee, expiring funds to the balance of the Auditor's Office Chief Inspector's Fund, and reports the same back with the recommendation that it do pass, respectfully submitted, Craig Blair, Chair. Report will be received. That's all I have. Unfinished business. There is none. Bills on third reading. 
Engrossed Senate Bill 272, updating code relating to Commission on Special Investigations. Third reading of the bill. Question for the Senator, shall the bill pass? Is there a discussion? The Senator from Morgan County. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Senate Bill 272 was recommended to both houses of the legislature by the legislature's commission on special investigations, and it amends the section in the article of code that creates and governs the operation of the commission on special investigations. It's Article 5, uh, Chapter 4. Uh, so there, within the bill, there are five sections of that article which are amended and there are two uh, new sections that are added to it. Uh, and so in many ways it's uh, updating of the current law, uh, but let me hit the highlights of what the uh, substantive changes are. Uh, there's change regarding composition of the commission. Under current law, uh, it's composed of five members from each house. That does not change, uh, but the bill specifies that the speaker and the president are to be one of the members uh, from each house, and they serve as chairs of the commission. That's actually been the practice of the commission, but it was wasn't previously codified. Uh, the bill requires that any action taken by the commission requires a majority vote of a quorum of the members appointed as opposed to uh, the current requirement of just majority. Um, under current law, the commission may employ staff. This bill changes that a little bit, and it specifies what the, the staff is going to be and who the positions. Uh, the bill calls for a director, a deputy director, senior investigators, and investigators. Um, the bill requires a quorum vote to enter into executive session. Um, much of the commission's work uh, is done of necessity in uh, executive session uh, because there are ongoing investigations uh, that involve uh, uh, funding, state funding, um, sometimes criminal activity, and just like any other law enforcement uh, investigation, although the commission is not a law enforcement agency, those things are done under uh, confidential circumstances. Uh, so, uh, but it requires a majority vote of the quorum to enter into uh, executive session. The bill eliminates the requirement that the commission expenses must be approved by the uh, joint uh, commission because it's redundant. It's structurally, it serves in the state government under uh, uh, joint, uh, as joint committee expense. The bill allows the commission to request, rather than subpoena, records from state, county, or local government entities. Uh, there's subpoena power there as well, but allows and directs compliance with those requests even in the absence of subpoenas. So there's a new section that makes it a crime for a person to impersonate uh, a member of the commission or its staff, and uh, the bill adds uh, one final section which allows the commission to award uh, a duty weapon to a uh, investigator of the commission upon his or her retirement and that makes it consistent with uh, uh, provisions we have in law that relate to law enforcement agencies. Um, this bill I'm pretty sure passed or something very similar to it passed the Senate last year and uh, didn't make it across the finish line. Mr. President I'll be happy to try to answer questions otherwise I urge passage of the bill. Is there further discussion? Further discussion? If not, all those in favor will vote yay. Those opposed will vote nay. The clerk will prepare the machine. Has every member voted? Every member voted. If so, the clerk will close the machine and ascertain the results. On this question being 33 yay, zero nays, one absent of not voting, more than the majority of those present and voting, having voted in the affirmative, I declare the bill passed. The clerk will communicate the action of the Senate to the House. Further bills on third reading? No, sir. Bills on second reading. Committee substitute for Senate Bill 3, establishing West Virginia Small Wireless Facilities Deployment Act. The junior senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask unanimous consent that Senate Bill 3 lie over one day while retaining its place on the calendar. Is there objection? Chair hears none, so ordered. 
Committee substitute for Senate Bill 17 relating to probation eligibility. Second reading of the bill. Are there amendments to the bill? No, sir. Not. The bill will be engrossed and advanced to third reading. Committee substitute for Senate Bill 61 adding certain crimes for which prosecutor may apply for wiretap. Second reading of the bill. Are there amendments to the bill? Yes, sir. Senators Trump and Weld move to amend the bill on the page one. The senator from Morgan County. Thank you, Mr. President. Our question name is consent to explain the amendment in lieu of having it read. Is there objection? Chair hears none. The senator may proceed. Although I will concede it might be shorter if the clerk just read it. Uh, it was suggested after we reported this bill that the offense of extortion be added to the list of those uh, for which a prosecuting attorney can apply to a circuit court judge for a wiretap. That's what this statute addresses. Uh, there are um, a list of offenses, and I think the Supreme Court designates, there used to be five, I think five circuit judges around the state who have authority to issue wiretaps upon application from a prosecuting attorney. And this statute lists the offenses being investigated under which it's appropriate for a prosecutor or possible for a prosecutor to make uh, the request for a judge to issue a wiretap order. And the amendment, if adopted, would add the offense of extortion to the list of those for which such an application would be made. Be happy to try to answer questions, otherwise urge adoption of the amendment. Discussion? Is there further discussion? Not. The question for the Senate is adoption of the amendment as offered and explained by the Senator from Morgan. All those in favor will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. I declare the amendment adopted. Are there further amendments to the bill? No, sir. Not. The bill will be engrossed and advanced to third reading. Senate Bill 119, specifying documents not subject to discovery in certain proceedings. Second reading of the bill. Are there amendments to the bill? No, sir. Not. The bill will be engrossed and advanced to third reading. Committee substitute for Senate Bill 152, relating generally to criminal offense expungement. Are there amendments to the bill? The Senator from Morgan County. Thank you, Mr. President. I request unanimous consent of the Senate that the bill lie over for one day, retaining its place on the count. Is there objection? Chair hears none. So ordered. Are there further bills on second reading? No, sir. Bills on first reading? Committee substitute for Senate Bill 62, requiring participation in drug court program before discharge of certain first-time drug offenses. First reading of the bill. Bill be advanced. Committee substitute for Senate Bill 240, repealing certain legislative rules no longer authorized or are obsolete. Bill be advanced. Further bills on first reading? No, sir. Introduction of guests. Introduction of guests. The senior senator from the 6th. Thank you, Mr. President. In the North Gallery, we have with us here today for Jefferson County Day, Patricia Kaunitz and Kathleen Lasershack. They are members of the motorsports team from Summit Point Motorsports Park in Jefferson County. As far as I know, that is the only road course in the state of West Virginia. Uh, they're excited about my bill, Senate Bill 325, that reintroduces the governor-appointed committee that would grow and develop motorsports in West Virginia like happened here in the early 2000s. Senate, if you will, please join me and make them welcome. Further introductions? Further introductions? What purpose does the senator from uh, Montegal you seek recognition? Uh, to address the body. Senator may proceed. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, or Mr. President, excuse me, uh, just simply to have the uh, comments by the good gentleman from Wetzel County printed in the appendix in general. Senator from Montegal, you request unanimous consent that the comments by the senator from Wetzel regarding passage of resolution, Senate. Senate Concurrent Resolution 11 be printed in the appendix of the journal. Is there objection? Chair hears none, so ordered. Further introductions? Remarks by members of the Senate. Remarks the Senator from Jefferson County. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so today is Jefferson County Day in the Capitol, and it's something I look forward to uh, every single year. Obviously, Jefferson County is the county that's at the 
far, far east of the state. And um, I appreciate that my constituents travel here that distance, and they can see the commute that I have to travel, um, all 328 miles. And I will tell you that the trip is well worth it. Of course, we live in a beautiful part of the state, but all of West Virginia is beautiful. And one of my jobs as senator of that district is to bridge that gap and to help you guys understand the issues and the difficulties we face, but also the wonderful advantages. And I think in the last few years, Jefferson and Berkeley County both have made great contributions to the state. And we have acknowledged it um, here in the Senate for sure and I think in all of the legislature. So as always, I'm thankful to have the opportunity to have Jefferson County Day, to have constituents here, and I want to let everybody know that there will be a catered lunch outside the House chamber after session is over. Thank you. Further remarks? Further remarks? The Senator from Jefferson County. Sorry, one more I have to make. So I'm sure all of you can see that we have some scouts here. Um, the Federation of North American Explorers is a Catholic volunteer youth movement that teaches responsibility, commitment, leadership, service, purity, and loyalty. The f &E youth explore nature and the outdoors, serve the community, provide leadership, and also practice their Catholic faith. Affiliated with the Union International of Scouts and Guides in Europe, the movement is present in 21 countries. And we have a group, Our Lady of the Annunciation f &E, that is in Charlestown, West Virginia. This, we have separate units for boys, girls, and young adults. And I have the privilege of being one of the scouts myself. I'm an assistant leader of this troop, and my leader is up there in the gallery, Laura Bacon. And I just have to let you guys know that it is a wonderful organization that I am proud to be part of. And like all scouts, I think it helps develop our youth and give them opportunities that they don't normally um, get to do. So thank you very much, and I appreciate everyone making the scouts welcome, including my own daughter, Teresa. Further remarks? Further remarks? Miscellaneous business, the junior senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask unanimous consent that the remarks by the junior senator from the 16th be placed in the appendix of the journal. Is there objection? Chair hears none, so ordered. The junior senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd also like to ask for unanimous consent that a leave of absence be granted from the, for the senator from Monroe. Is there objection? Chair hears none, so ordered. Junior senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Pending announcements, I move the Senate stand adjourned until Monday at 11 a.m. Are there announcements? The chair has an announcement. Having previously qualified, the senator from Logan has been appointed to the following committees. The Committee on Judiciary, the Committee on Agriculture and Rural Development, the Committee on Military, the Committee on Interstate Cooperation, and the Committee on Natural Resources. Are there further announcements? Further announcements. The Senator from Preston County. Thank you, Mr. President. Your Committee on Agriculture will meet today at 1230-208 West. 1230-208 West. Senator from Morgan County. Thank you, Mr. President. Your Committee on Judiciary will meet immediately following the adjournment of the Committee on Agriculture, uh, also in the Judiciary Committee room uh, in the West Wing. Further announcements? Further announcements? The Senator from Wood County. Thank you, Mr. President. Your Committee on Banking and Insurance will meet on Monday. I just want to remind today, in case I forget, Monday at 2 p.m. in uh, 451 M. Further announcements? Not question before the Senate is, shall the Senate stand adjourned until Monday morning at 11 a.m.? All those in favor will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. I declare the Senate adjourned until Monday at 11 a.m.